Hey, it's Joe from Plant Based News, and today we're going to be talking about the absolute crisis in masculinity. There's been this phenomena that's been worldwide where perfectly normal masculine men who are drinking oodles of milk, and this milk is so filled with estrogen that those men are becoming effeminate. They're drinking this milk and this phenomenal transformation is taking place where their whole body changes, their whole fashion sense changes. They start wearing floral shirts and start acting extremely effeminate when they never used to be. And all of this is down to all of the estrogen in milk. They're called dairy boys and it's a real problem that's causing havoc amongst all of the world's cities because having effeminate men in the world right now is a real problem. Now, obviously, that's a whole bunch of nonsense. It's a whole bunch of nonsense. But when people say that about soy, it's rational. Well, that makes a lot of sense, you know? Soy, estrogen, soy boys, they're all a bit effeminate. And the first thing I wanna say is the whole idea that being effeminate is a slur is, is, is even too big to address in this video. So we're just gonna play along the lines of the rationale behind assuming that men drinking soy with all the amount of estrogen it's claimed to have or the estrogen producing compounds it's claimed to have leads to someone being more effeminate so let's just ignore for now that that's not even a problem even if it did happen and let's look more deeply at the way people use this to discourage people from becoming vegan and also what is the real source of estrogen in our diet and what effects it has on us as a whole. So let's get to it. So as a first step, let's all quickly get on the same page and let's find out what is the standard definition of a soy boy. What is a soy boy? Usually an adult male who is fixated on pop culture and childish pleasures. Someone who never grew up. It is exactly this purging of meaningfulness that has led to the soy boy. What? What the hell is that? In looking into this subject, that clip was the one that astounded me the most because it's so far removed from the origins of this term. It's like they found a way to or put people off veganism and it's gone so far away from the original meaning that it's just taken on to refer to an entire characterization that seems to include every known behavior of young men. I mean, showering, driving with a seatbelt, <laughs> what is it? What are they going on about? It's absolutely bonkers that this would happen over a plant. Let's go to someone that I think is going to have a lot greater insight into the meaning of this word. You going to use them? I'll definitely use them. All right. I like candles. A few moments later. Those are good too. Okay. And they're soy too. They're soy. Yeah, and they're hand poured in the you USA. You can have them back. I'm not in the so I don't do anything with soy. It's a candle, man. So candles are okay, but soy is too effeminate. Like, as I said at the start of this video, I think this whole idea of men being too effeminate is just ridiculous. But from the context of the whole soy boy argument, it's just basically, you know, you could literally have a, like, the most wonderful bath covered in, like, incense oils and candles, and that's macho, provided you don't use soy candles. I mean, it's just really ridiculous. People get mad at soy. Soy is like a political fruit or a uh, vegetable. Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. People call you a soy boy. If you're a Republican, people call uh, weak men soy boys. That's like a, a, it's an insult. Soy is one of the rare foods that's actually attached to being a That's a food? Yeah, like you, you can grow to off of soy? Not quite, but it might feminize you. This is where it all began. With this idea that soy, because it contains phytoestrogens, can feminize you. Now, this is such a leap across so many boundaries. Number one, having more estrogen may feminize your body, but it doesn't necessarily feminize your character, which is what a soy boy is. It's a character. It's a character archetype that's more effeminate, right? But they're not, it's not a direct relationship. And number two, the idea that eating a plant can make you more effeminate, it might feminize you, is literally breaks all basic ideas around science. And the fact that the world's biggest podcast host will happily discuss this with a guest 
who brought him soy candles. So that guest didn't have a problem with soy until he started saying he doesn't want to use it because it feminizes you. And five seconds later, the guest is asking, can you grow breasts from eating soy? That's how quickly this thing spreads. But the only reason this gets any foothold is because people are so against veganism. And that's really what this is about. They're so against veganism that they will take the most flimsy arguments, the most tenuous connections, and string it into a whole set of uh, impacts that will affect you negatively and turn you into a girl. Like, they, they allow their own bias to blind them so deeply that they're willing to say anything to protect their precious stance as an omnivore. So I decided to ask Chat GTP. The term soy boy is a slang expression often used in internet and meme culture. It is typically used as a derogatory term to criticize or insult someone, usually a man, who is perceived as weak, effeminate, or lacking in masculinity according to certain traditional or stereotypical standards. Oh my god. I mean, if this was a race of people, this would be considered hate speech to take their characteristics and stuff that they do, like eat soy, and turn that into something that is completely derogatory. And at the same time, to make it derogatory, you've got to also offend everybody on the whole planet who has any fem feminine characteristics whatsoever. It's literally, they just don't care. It's like to protect this self-centered idea of being masculine and eating meat and butch and strong. They are absolutely willing to bully anybody, which is the least masculine thing you can do to completely over overrun a whole group of people, which, as I said, if it was a race of people, it would be considered absolutely hate speech. And in doing so, you're also willing to negate the entire characteristics of the feminine quality, which is a beautiful quality. The world's made up of yin and yang. Masculine and feminine go together. To, 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 to say that, oh, it's so difficult to explain. It's, it's so difficult to explain. It's like to, to first call half of the entire energy in the whole universe negative, and then associate it with people being negative for drinking soy, because soy has a thing in it that sounds a bit like estrogen, but it's not even the same thing. And even if it was, that would be able to make you become more effeminate. <laughs> literally, it's literally, why don't they just say, I'm really insecure and absolutely I'm going to make up anything I possibly can to make myself feel better about being a man that eats meat. That's the bottom line here. That's the bottom line. Soy boy! So where did this all begin? And in doing my research for this video, I came across what I think is one of the perfect, perfect explanations of this subject. And I decided I'm gonna show the video because I just think it's just so on point. It is so on point. Take a look at this. Go get your chocolates and wine and cry in the bathtub, you silly cucks. High soy diets spike estrogen and lower testosterone. That's not a disputable fact. So, let's dispute the facts! The theory that soy is bad for you stems from a certain superstition in the bodybuilding community. Here's the YouTube channel of Elliot Hulse, a professional bodybuilder with 1.7 million subscribers. Your entire body is your brain. Well, this guy knows what he's talking about. I wonder what he thinks about soy. Soy protein makes you weak and womanly. Protein is protein. I didn't know there was a particular protein that makes you weak and womanly. Almost every bit of soy in the United States or in the West yeah, is going to be genetically modified. Now, I'm not saying pro or con for genetically modified foods, but it's been weird. Right? It just, it sounds like freakish and Frankensteinish to me. I don't know the end result. You know, it might be the greatest thing that's ever happened to humankind. I don't fucking know. I don't think it's a good idea. I don't like it, but I can't tell you the truth. You gotta figure it out yourself. This is why these things are so exploitive of the viewer. Because you've got someone that's obviously very skilled at weight training. And he's built a lot of muscle, right? And that takes a lot of discipline. So there's a natural respect that you earn amongst your audience. And then when you speak with such a high degree of confidence in your tone, but yet what you're saying is you don't actually know, people don't hear 
what you what you're saying that you don't actually know they are receiving your confidence your musculature and your determination to say that soy makes you weak and womanly all he tells you is to go and look for yourself but no one's going to do that they're looking is bringing them to you where your headline says soy makes you weak and womanly so it's very disingenuous to do this to people right now i'm not saying i'm ever going to have the discipline or the the, the desire or the will to build muscle like um dear elliot here but that doesn't negate the basic right of us to say, if you're going to make claims, you need to support them. Otherwise, you're misleading quite often an entire generation or a subset of a generation of people. So, where's your evidence that soy feminizes people? I would offer you to pick up a book called The Whole Soy Truth by Kayla Daniels. This book is authored by professional nutritional iconoclast Dr. Kayla T. Daniel, the naughty nutritionist telling the truth that's too hot to handle. I believe that's code for my work isn't peer reviewed. <laughs> this is great. So I tracked down the naughty nutritionist and this is what she has to say. Hi, I'm Dr. Kayla Daniel, the naughty nutritionist here to outrageously and humorously debunk nutritional myths. All of those soybeans contain phytoestrogens, that's plant estrogens, and they are a form of estrogenizing influence on the body. They create hormonal havoc. They create endocrine disruption. And there you have it. A myth was born. All it took was a few big bodybuilders saying that eating soy will make you very, very womanly and weak. If you want to be a woman, keep eating soy. A few doctors, particularly naughty ones, who would write books about why estrogen or phytoestrogen in soy makes you have man boobs. If you want breasts, just keep eating soy. And then it was the unfortunate naming of calling phytoestrogens estrogens. I'm going to call these phytoestrogens because they look like estrogens, but no one in the future is ever going to think eating these plant compounds is going to turn you into a woman. And this was because some science dude looked at the structure and saw there was a similarity to estrogens and saw that they were found in plants and they called them plant estrogens. Why are phytoestrogens even called estrogens when taking them doesn't seem to affect the levels of estrogen or testosterone in your blood? Well, it's because in terms of chemical structure, it's very similar, but the actual chemical components are very different. This means they do bind with estrogen receptors, but the effects are very different because, to put it scientifically, they're made of different stuff. And the final reason, and I think the most important reason, is there needed to be an army of men who were so insecure about their masculinity that they had to assign feminizing properties to a bean. Don't you dare threaten my masculinity, girly bean. I know what some people are thinking. Even though the science doesn't support it, there must be some truth because you don't start thinking beans make you grow man boobs if there isn't some truth behind it. The man boob story really took off in 2008 after a couple doctors in Texas described a case of gynecomastia in a man drinking a lot of soy milk, three quarts a day, which is almost three liters. Scientists have disputed the cause of gynecomastia in this isolated case, which is not necessarily due to the phytoestrogens in soy. I searched the medical literature and I could only find a couple cases ever described tying gynecomastia to soy. See, the problem is most reputable sources will just tell you, yeah, soy is a healthy food, it's a good idea to include some in your diet. And that's the gist of it, that's good information. The problem is it doesn't cover the oddities, so it leaves the door open for confusion. And exploitation. You see, the world is very complex and there are anomalies. And it's very, very easy to look at any single subject, find a rare case, and try to make that the theme. And this is what makes health information so challenging. And this is why for every single diet or every way of life that you can imagine, there is a scientific report that supports it. So you really have to go on trusted scientific resources, meta studies that look at more than one single study combined with your own experience. While trying to find studies on the effects of soy intake on estrogen and testosterone levels, I found a paper which assessed all English language studies there had been as of 2008 in which men consumed soy and their testosterone was tested, which at the time was 32. The paper pretty definitively suggests that soy foods and the phytoestrogens in them thereof do not alter the testosterone concentration in men. Bear in mind, this wasn't just one study. This was a meta-analysis of the results of all 32 other studies there had been at the time. The scientific evidence is in, but there's also anecdotal evidence because other vegans have put this to the test. 
I ate over a pound of soy every day for 30 days because you guys have heard this myth so many times and I get it every single day in my videos because I do eat soy on a regular basis and people are saying, you know, if you eat soy, your testosterone is going to go down, you're going to get man boobies, your strength is going to go away, your physique is going to look like crap, all this myth spreading and this has been around for so many years. Soy boys are reproducing, causing the destruction of Western civilization. And there's even studies and I'll even link it below, there's a meta-analysis of over, I think like over a hundred studies where they show that there's no significant decrease in, in testosterone, there's no significant increase in estrogen, and still people don't have that word out to them. So I thought, what the hell? I had 30 blocks of tofu throughout this period. I had eight Chipotle burritos, which I got double sofritas. So 24 cartons of soy milk because I have around four or five every single week. I had five blocks of tempeh, and tempeh is soybeans, but they're just fermented and they're hard instead of being squishy like tofu is. I had quite a bit of soy fast food on two different occasions, two different days where I did like a cheat day. And then I had a bunch of like little snacks and stuff. Like I had theoretical according to the myth my testosterone should be plummeted I should feel terrible I should have big old man boobies all my muscles should have gone away well let's see what happened uh, testosterone total your value 698 nanograms per deciliter so we've actually gone up It's completely indisputable that soy has any effect or measurable effect on hormonal levels in the human body. And as I said, even if there was estrogen in soy that translated into human estrogen in your body, it still wouldn't feminize you. It might give you a, a condition such as man boobs, as it's called, but that doesn't feminize you. That is something that's happening to your body. But more importantly than that, it doesn't matter how much evidence there is, people persist in this myth. Now, I made a jokey sketch at the beginning about Dairy Boys, which we're going to come back to. But I actually found someone made a real sketch about Soy Boys. Uh, take a look at this. Something ain't right. He is working out every other day and apparently follows a diet and he is unable to build muscle anyway. Hey, what are you doing? Let me go bro. Drop I it. need this. I'm trying to help you. Just walk away. No you will not get any weird with this. My body. No. So that joke I made at the beginning about the joke of there being dairy boys, right? Someone actually made that for real about soy boys. That's how deep this goes. And this brings me to the most important point in this video. If you are going to be as ridiculous to assume that estrogen in food makes you effeminate rather than affecting your hormonal balance, then if you're going to do that, they should be called dairy boys. And this is why. Relatively little research has examined the ecological consequences of environmental loading with actual estrogens. Uh, this is somewhat surprising given that the potency of some estrogens can be thousands of times more estrogenic than you know, typical endocrine disrupting chemicals. Estradiol, for example, is at least 10,000 times more potent than most xenoestrogens, and dietary exposure to natural sex steroids in meat, dairy, and eggs is therefore highly relevant in the discussion of the impact of, of estrogens on human development and health. And like you know, chicken estrogen is identical to human estrogen, they're identical molecules. So while everyone's going on about phytoestrogens in soy and making that the story, very few people are looking at actual estrogens, not plant estrogens, actual animal estrogens in the food supply from meat, dairy, and eggs. So it doesn't matter if it ends up in our drinking supply from women taking birth control pills excreting it in their urine, or cows excreting it into their milk. The source doesn't matter, the quantity does. And a child's exposure to estrogens in drinking water is about 150 times lower than exposure from cow's milk. I'm not laughing at the tragedy, I'm laughing at the absurdity. <laughs> So while everyone's going out calling people soy boys, and some young boy somewhere is thinking, I don't want to be called a soy boy, so they're avoiding soy milk. Meanwhile, they're drinking milk, and the exposure is 150 times from what you find in tap water, which is filled with estrogen from birth control. It's just, it's just 
It's just mind-boggling. It's mind-boggling. So our day-to-day -day estrogen levels are more likely determined by you know, whether or not we have to eat you know, dairy products that day. The sad reality that Dr. Greger just made me realize is that there are dairy boys. My joke wasn't really a joke. There are dairy boys. It's all the children at school drinking milk, loading up on 150 times more estrogen than they would find in the water supply. So they actually do exist where soy boys are a completely made up entity. But what's not made up is dairy girls. The effect of estrogen on women, additional estrogen in the diet on women is greater than the effect that it has on the boys. Take a look at this, and this is not even a plant-based doctor. So this doesn't pertain to men. So what is the relationship between dairy and your menstrual cycle? Well, it, ha it comes down to this one hormone, estrogen okay many people already have too much estrogen and we are swimming in a sea of estrogen so if we have too much estrogen and then we're consuming a product that is meant for a growing calf which has additional hormones it can sometimes create some issues okay not just with your menstrual cycle but with the breast tissue uterus and the ovary so if you're noticing that you're having problems with hormones you may want to avoid dairy for a while just to see if that's the culprit I don't feel well. I bet it was the tofu I ate last week. So in this video, we kicked off with a sketch about Dairy Boys. And then we had a look at the real phenomena of labeling men who appear to be effeminate as soy boys and the whole history of that. We then had a look at the real source of estrogen in our diet. And it's very clear that the greater issue around estrogen in the diet, actual estrogen is dairy products. So we then concluded that if anybody is going to be called effeminate from what they choose to eat, they should be called dairy boys. Now, obviously, I think it's nonsense to subscribe feminizing qualities with feminizing effects on the body due to estrogen. They are not the same thing. Basically, estrogen, too much estrogen is a problem no matter who you are, and it affects your health, not your gender expression let's call it that it affects your health and that's what you want to take care of so one of the things you can do to improve your health regardless of how masculine or feminine you are or want to be is switch dairy for soy <laughs> switch dairy for soy that's what i do right i have soy that i use to substitute for feta cheese i have tempeh that i use to slice and grill and put in sandwiches i make uh, soy desserts using uh, silken tofu. I make dressings from soy. All of that has replaced my dairy and it is delicious and it is proven to be healthy. You know, soy products are so handy. Instead of bacon, there is soy bacon. Instead of cow's milk, there's soy milk. There are soy cheeses. When you're having some tofu or soy milk, your friends might say, hmm, I read on the internet that soy is not healthy for you. And you say, what do you mean? Well, uh, it's got hormones or it causes cancer or man boobs or something like that. Or da, da, da. You know, let's break all this down. Okay, first of all, what's great about soy? It's not dairy, it's not meat. That means there's no cholesterol in it. There's very little saturated fat in it. It's healthy overall, but there's more to it than that. There are actually protective things in soy. Whole soy foods like tofu and soy milk have what are called isoflavones. And they have a structure that's vaguely similar to testosterone or estrogen, but it has really healthful effects on the body. Now, the isoflavones actually do attach to breast cells. And so some people thought, oh my goodness sakes, if it's attaching to my estrogen receptor, that could cause cancer. But the research studies showed exactly the opposite. The women who consume the most soy have about 30% lower risk of developing breast cancer compared to their soy avoiding friends. And this is especially important for teens and even preteens because if they're having soy products while the breast tissue is forming, it becomes a particularly important cancer preventer over the long run. Okay, so what is it about soy? I mentioned that it attaches to the breast cell at the estrogen receptor. Wouldn't that be bad? Okay, next time you're in your car, look down at the floor. You've got a pedal there, it's called the gas. When you step on it, the car goes. Right next to it is the brake. When you step on the brake, what happens? The car stops. Your cells have alpha receptors and beta receptors, and soy attaches preferentially to the beta. 
wait a minute, he just said beta. Soy attaches to the beta. I'm not a beta, I'm an alpha, soy boys. That's how stupid it is though. Anyway, back to Dr. Bernard. You can really think of it as a break on cancer. Men, you get a benefit too. Men who consume the most soy have about 29% less risk of prostate cancer compared to men who are really neglecting their soy products. So it's great all the way around. Perhaps the best thing about soy really is that it's so versatile, it tastes great, and it's good for you. It's a cancer preventive, it's good for the whole family. There is one final part of this topic that I want to explore, and that's the idea around masculinity, because that's what's really being challenged at the heart of this, by being presumed. The presumption is that the masculine one is the one calling the other one effeminate. So if I'm standing there and going, hey, you know, I'm the masculine one and you're effeminate because you look a certain way, right? I'm assuming the position of being the masculine. But what does it really mean to be masculine? That's quite a complicated question. There are some clearer answers, some more great areas. But I'd rather look at what does it mean to definitely not be masculine, right? Number one, calling people soy boys. There could be nothing more soy boyish than calling another person who you perceive to be weaker than you because that's the presumption a name so already you are being a dairy boy by calling soy boys soy boys if we're going to go into that conversation but a bigger issue i think that's way more staring us in the face is what where do you show up in the world when it comes to the voiceless animals that are, share this planet with us. So let's compare how dairy boys get their cow's milk versus how soy boys get their soy milk with the help of one of my all-time favorite vegan creators, Erin Janis. The dairy industry inseminates or impregnates cows starting at the age of around 12 months over and over and over again so they keep making milk. And they're dried soybeans. And we soak them the night before. At first, the industry jacks off a bunch of bulls, sometimes using a hand or help from an electro ejaculator, which is basically a giant cow dildo that goes into the anus of the bull until he blows. We grind the soybeans and then we put it into our cookers. And that semen is collected and then inserted into the vagina of a female cow, usually while she's confined in what the industry calls a rape rack. This machine squeezes out the soy milk. So we double filter it to get as pure of soy milk as we can. And sometimes they put their fist right into the anus of the female cow. But the rest gets turned into tofu. And when that baby cow is born, it's pretty much immediately taken away from its mother and locked in a crate. Because if it stayed around mom, it would drink her milk. <laughs> and that shit's for us. It's like the height of hypocrisy or cognitive dissonance or just sheer ignorance that allows people to convince themselves that by supporting an industry, the dairy industry, that's harmful as that, makes them more masculine. And men who are turning away from that industry are more effeminate. Who are standing up to being called names are more effeminate. Who are working to protect these voiceless animals that cannot speak up to themselves are more effeminate because they eat a bean. <laughs> My name is Steve Ju. I'm the chef and owner of Judubu in Oakland, California. Today, I'll be turning these soybeans into dubu. <laughs> you couldn't make this up. You couldn't make it up. You really couldn't. So I'm going to end this video with a confession. I am a soy boy. I am a soy boy through and through. I absolutely love the stuff. And my recommendation to anyone out there who's feeling insecure about your masculinity and is looking to ways to become more of a man, I would suggest you just go on a lifelong journey as all men do to find out what that means for you. But if you wanna be more healthy, cut out the dairy, pick up the soy. The evidence is in, the case is closed, and at the same time, you can do one of the most beneficial things a human can do, and that is extract yourself from the harmful animal food industry that we have built in this world. That is the most beneficial thing you can do, is just leave that arena. So that's it for this one. Subscribe to the channel, like and share, comments and questions below, and I will see you in the next video.